We all know that Clash Royale takes place in the same universe as Clash of Clans and other Clash games. I mean, you can visually tell by looking at the troops and environments. However, this wasn't always the case. The story starts in 2014. A few developers started working on a project set in a new world inspired by traditional fantasy with fresh new gameplay mechanics. As the team moved forward with the development of the game, a Clash character found its way into the new game, and the rest, as they say, is history. But today we're going to be taking a look at the times when Clash Royale was called Wizard Arena Clash of Clans. <laughs> Wait, is that actually real? Okay. Let's take a step back. I made a video titled The Side of Clash Royale You Never Saw about four years ago. I showcased some data mined images from the game somebody found back in the day, along with some features that the game was supposed to have, but was ultimately removed. Don't worry, we'll look at them together again. But first, I wanted to focus on the art of Supercell. This book shows the various stages each game went through, and you guessed it, Clash Royale is in there. So of course, we're going to be taking a look at those leaked images, deleted features, and images from the art of Supercell to help us understand what Clash Royale started as. Let's start with the book. I know you can simply buy the book and read it yourself, but I chose to make a video about it so we can read it together like a big happy family. Well, there's very minimal words in this book, but uh, you know what I meant. The Clash Royale section starts with a promotional image that you usually see on ads or after a trailer. Here it is revealed that Clash Royale used to be called Wizard Arena Clash of Clans, which makes sense because as we mentioned earlier, the game was set in a totally different world, but it slowly transitioned to the world of Clash of Clans after developers played around with a troop from the Clash world. If it isn't obvious already, that troop was the wizard. We can actually see early concepts of the wizard. It looks like it started off as different kinds of wizards, so there was one with a wand, then he became this fellow holding a book, and then eventually a modified wizard from Clash of Clans. The book explains that the wizard was the main character in the battles not a king. We can also see this in the picture of the arena, which looks completely different. Some of you may already understand what's going on here, but if you don't, basically the king towers are an old version of the wizard, accompanied by what looks like his knights. The two princess towers used to be towers, kind of look like the ones from like League of Legends, and basically these towers shot arrows at you, but there were no princesses. Pretty much, you would deploy troops using your elixir to try and get the two towers and the king's army to win the battle. It's basically the same as today, but looks incredibly different. Some other things to note is that the bridge was the opposite of what it is today, so instead of going from the sides, you went through a roundabout in the middle. Also, you kinda had an insane amount of elixir. I don't know what's that about. And finally, we can see that the king is a card available to deploy. As we said, the wizard was the main macho here, so the king was just a troop. You know, like any other troop in the game. Overall, this picture alone gives us a great insight of what Clash Royale used to be in 2014. Also, side note, yes, these arrows remained in the game up until the soft launch trailer. Whoa! An image that has me puzzled though is this caravan looking thing. There seems to be two images showing it, but I can't quite figure out what it was for. There is a destroyed building in the arena, and that could be the caravan, but still, I'm not sure. And if it is a caravan, I don't really know what the purpose of it was in the battle. There seems to be like a comic here explaining what they're saying outside of the caravan, but that doesn't really explain what it was for. I guess we'll never know what it was for, unless you guys want to take a shot at it in the comment section below. Before moving on to more things though, I wanted to briefly showcase more cards and their initial designs. Here we get a chance to see some of the initial designs for the king, a 3D model of the princess, and a real giant with, um, gray hair? <laughs> Instead of holding a cannon, the king also had a musket, which most likely inspired the musketeer, before being redesigned into the king we know today. 
Speaking of the musketeer, the character itself got a lot of inspirations from an archer. The knight, on the other hand, got a lot of his looks from the barbarian. He simply started off as a barbarian with armor, and over time he became the knight. So the charger, which I'm sure you guys have heard of already, was a scrapped card that would charge at enemies. Sort of like a mix between the bannon and the mega knight. The bowler looks pretty similar to what it is today, but he looks more like a long lost cousin of the goblins. Just looks like a big old purple goblin, you know? The baby dragon, as we've mentioned in other videos, started off as a regular dragon. But when the developers realized it blocked too much of the arena due to its size, they decided to downsize it into a baby dragon. More on that later, of course, because uh, there, we still have a lot to talk about. The book has a lot of these initial designs of cards, but today's focus was more on what Clash Royale looked like before launch. Of course, you can see a lot of these images online as well, so let's move on to arenas. There's not a whole lot going on here, but the book explains that originally, arenas were based off existing Clash of Clans characters. Eventually, arenas were changed to give the player a sense of progression. As we can see here, the arenas looked very similar, but you can obviously tell you were getting somewhere. Every arena gradually grew better structure and walls. This was later changed again to match different environments that would match the troops you unlocked in those arenas. Of course, these arenas would go through a lot of changes before the game would eventually go public. As I said, the rest of the book goes on about more interesting things, but nothing more about the development stages. So here's where the leaks come in. So this whole thing started when Clash Royale posted an image on their social media websites on how Clash Royale looked like in 2015, during development stages obviously. The image in question is a match in Clash Royale. There's a few similarities in this image with the original one we saw earlier, like the wizard being the king. Obviously this one was much later though since it had towers and the knights we all know and love. Aside from the various small changes though, this wasn't the first time some of us had seen this image. This arena was kept in the game files for a long time and someone discovered it a year before Clash Royale posted it. This someone was none other than the infamous Opegit Studio, who is notorious for leaking updates with incredible accuracy. They ended up posting the pictures online, it's the same arena but with updated assets. This is because the arena is a separate file from everything else. So the arena, and let's say a knights, and the towers are completely separate files. By the time Opicket Studio found these images, it was only a picture of the arena itself. But that's not all they found. They found a few images of some uh, familiar looking cards. When I made this video four years ago, I couldn't tell exactly what these troops were supposed to be, so I tried my best to explain, but today, we know exactly what they are. You can probably already tell some of them too, because we saw some of these earlier. On the top left, we see that there used to be a dragon and its card image right next to it. We mentioned earlier that the dragon became the baby dragon due to size issues. Well, yeah. As we can see here, before it was converted to a baby dragon, there was a noticeably smaller version of the dragon we were supposed to get. On the top right, we have the kings sporting that musket we saw earlier. This time, it's an in-game asset instead of art. So this is how the king used to look in the game. The bottom left looks like an early version of the barracks, but the leak suggests that in the game files, it said that the barracks walked. Yeah, I don't really know how that would have worked. And in the bottom right, we see once again an early version of the wizard we saw earlier. Unfortunately, that's where the data mined images stopped though. But we aren't done yet. There's a whole set of things that the game was supposed to have, but were scrapped before launch. So now we're gonna take a look at that list. Let's start off with the chest, specifically what we could do. According to what was data mined, we used to be able to throw away chests or sell them if we didn't want them. Ironically, once the game came out, everyone started to ask for these exact features. There was also an auto opening of chests, which supposedly worked the same way as queuing, but for free. Unlocking multiple chests was possible, additional chest slots, and finally, it was possible to cancel a chest that was unlocking. 
Wild times back then, huh? Moving on, supposedly there was not six, but nine text emojis that we could use in game. Now these were translated from a different language, so it's unknown what they actually said, but supposedly they were, that was nasty, fail, and awesome. In TV Royale, the most watched replays and the most shared replays were shown separately, which is interesting because we can't see the most watched or the most shared replays at all. Another interesting find was that there was an uncommon rarity. So it went from common to uncommon, rare, epic, and eventually legendary. It's unknown why this uncommon rarity was removed though. And finally, it looks like there was two scrapped cards one of them being a trap. Now it's unknown what that trap was, but it could have been the bear trap that was leaked years later. And then there was some kind of building that shot rockets, but I assume that this building that shot rockets would eventually become the rockets. This is all speculation at this point, but there was indeed a mention of a rocket tower and a trap card. Sadly, this is all the information I have gathered about how Clash Royale was before launch. It's crazy to see how far the game has come, but it's especially crazy to see images of what the game could have been. It's like traveling back to that time, you know? I mean, it's just a different game, and it makes me wonder, what if we actually got to play what was Wizard Arena Clash of Clans, or the version before that that had no connection to the Clash world whatsoever? I guess we'll never know, but this video is probably as close as we'll ever get or I should say the book as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace.